The third of the fundamental interactions is the weak interaction. This is the last one accounted for by the standard model of particle physics. The weak interaction was initially introduced to explain some types of radioactive decay. So let me discuss some generalities about radioactive decay before we look at the experimental observation which led to the introduction of this new interaction. Most atomic nuclei and particles are unstable in the sense that they often decay into lighter nuclei or particles. The most famous radioactive decay modes of atomic nuclei are beta decay, in which an electron or a positron are emitted, alpha decay, with the emission of an helium-4, and fission. These decays are probabilistic. A nucleus has a constant probability per unit of time to decay. This constant is often noted lambda. The probability for a nucleus to decay over a short time, delta t, is lambda times delta t. Equivalently, the probability for a nucleus to not decay over delta t is 1 minus lambda delta t. Because of the decay, the nucleus has a probability p of t, which is smaller than 1, to still be here at time t. Therefore, the probability for the nucleus to be here at time t plus delta t is which we can rewrite for infinitely small delta t using the time derivative of the probability. We can check that the solution to this equation is radioactive decays are exponential in time. It is usual to define the lifetime as tau equal 1 over lambda in such a way that p of t is uh, p of 0 exponential minus t over tau. Alternatively, we sometimes use the half-life t1 half, after which the probability has been divided by 2. As an exercise, show that t1 half is equal to tau times logarithm of 2. 